This weekend of this second Sunday of Lent is a very important one in our parish for each year. It is the weekend that we begin our 40 hours devotion. Uh, tonight we will have, immediately after Mass, we'll have the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, it will be exposed for the entire night, and then tomorrow we will formally begin the 40 hours after our 11 o'clock uh, Sunday Mass. We'll have adoration of the Blessed Sacrament throughout Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday after Mass each day, concluding Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock for our evening prayer as Father Ted Keating, a native son of our parish, the pastor of Seven Sorrows in Middletown, will be with us as our homilist. The devotion of 40 hours was brought to our country by St. John Newman when he was the Bishop of Philadelphia in the mid-1800s. 40 hours is the time that tradition holds our Lord laid in the tomb before his resurrection. It is a devotion of great prayer, and it is a devotion that leads us to an encounter that is akin to the event that we hear about in today's gospel, the transfiguration. We hear that Jesus took Peter, James, and John to a high mountain apart by themselves, and there he manifests himself to them in bright light and in great splendor. They are, of course, overwhelmed. Peter, it seems, almost stumbling, says, it is good that we are here. And then there is this voice from the cloud, of the, the voice of the Father saying, this is my beloved Son, listen to him. You and I are meant to be with Peter and James and John. This light of faith that has been given to us gives us the ability to see what is hidden from our eyes, that Jesus is indeed the Son of God, that in this Eucharist that we will adore during these four hours, what looks like bread is in fact his very true presence in his risen glory. The season of Lent that we heard Ten days ago as we started where Jesus gave us that three-part plan of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, that these acts of penance in Lent are not means to an end, but they're not ends in of themselves, but they're means to an end. And that the acts of penance and prayer will be liberating for us, for sin enslaves us. Look at the analogy in the natural world of addiction. A person gives in to a disordered tendency, develops a physical reaction that then binds him or her. And it is the exact same thing in our spiritual life. When we sin, we then develop this habit or tendency to sin, and we lose our freedom. But when we listen to Christ, when we heed those Lenten calls to discipline, we can be freed from what binds us, filled with the light of His grace, Look at the example of Abraham in our first reading. He is asked to do the unthinkable, to offer his son as a sacrifice to God. But he's guided by the light of faith. And so God then stops him and he promises to bless him abundantly, making his descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. And of course, this act of a father who would be willing to sacrifice his only son, prefigures that perfect love that God the Father has for us in offering his son for our salvation. How could one possibly do that as Abraham did? Were he not transformed by God's love? And how can we achieve this similar transformation except in those disciplines of Lent Again, we know that fasting that Lent imposes, that's required of us, or that we voluntarily undertake, tonight we'll begin our in solicitation is the most tangible expression of our almsgiving. But in these 40 hours devotion for us as a parish community, we are offered this wonderful opportunity of prayer. Again, so we see those three parts of Lent, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. In the Garden of Gethsemane, when our Lord began his bitter passion, he asked his apostles to spend one hour with him. 
And so he does that now to all of us over the course of these next three days to spend some time here in this church apart from all that can demand our time and attention to orient ourselves not to all of those things that we think are so important, but to the one who is the most important, our risen Lord. How our hearts are hurting in so many ways. How each of us hungers and thirsts for true and lasting peace. How we so need to spend time in that prayer and intimate communion with Christ so we might be filled with his guidance, his wisdom, and his grace. So let us take advantage of this great opportunity given to us that was given to Peter, James, and John in today's gospel to be apart with him by ourselves. Let us, as they did, gaze upon him in his risen glory. Let us open our hearts and experience in the silence of prayer, silence that speaks much louder than any words, the truth of his transfigured glory, hearing the words of our loving Father, this is my beloved Son, listen to him. And then the perseverance of our completeness of what our Lord has given us for Lent and prayer fasting and almsgiving, the light of Christ will shine brightly to each of us. We will grow in this communion with the one whom we receive in this blessed sacrament, striving to follow him more and more each day until that last day when we pray we will see him, not under the veil of unleavened bread that he now appears to us, but as he is in his infinite glory forever in that never-ending light and life of heaven.